Okay, you're welcome back. Right now we're talking about what the craze is in Nigeria right now. The trend in Nigeria is everybody's trying to break a world record. But um, we're looking at the medical or the health issues that are associated with uh, breaking a world record. For instance, cooking for 100 hours or 150 hours uh, for doing a lot of other things that people want to do and be the only ones that have done that in a lifetime or something and enter the Guinness World uh, Records book. But we're going to be talking about, like I said, the health um, aspect of it, and we're glad to be joined this morning by Dr. Fate Ajakai, uh, a medical officer. Good morning and welcome to the program, doctor. Okay, well, a lot of people want to break records, and before I come to you, doctor, there is one particular record that a Nigerian intends to break, 200 hours of crying and he calls it cryaton. So let's just take that uh, clip right now before we go back to the discussion that we are taking this morning. <laughs> I'm sure that is a record that should be followed by a laugh at -on, so that after crying so much, people will laugh for so long. Uh, he's crying and watching the time because he's on one seat and the other seat has the time that shows how much he has cried. When that video was done, he had already cried up to two hours out of the 200 hours that he intends to cry. Doctor, today we're looking at the health aspect of these uh, um, attempt at breaking world records. We saw uh, Hilda Bassi, that seems to be the one who has triggered the trend. Uh, she cooked for 100 hours, even though some hours were reduced from her cooking hours. She cooked for 100 hours straight. The other person wants to cook for 200 hours, 150 hours, whatever they want to do, they want to do for this long. Let us know what that means to the body of the person trying to break a record or set a record? The person that is trying to break a record for um, very long hours, um, there's something we call, so at that period of time, the person is going through a lot of stress. So there's something we call the stress almost that is being released at that time that helps to keep your body um, alert at that moment and keep you awake at that moment. But as when this um, period of time, this stress um, period is being prolonged for a bit, it causes some um, damages to the body. Like if definitely if you are um, not sleeping for a very long time, probably for more than a day or two, there will be physical exertion. Your body won't be able to take it. So um, these hormones are being released and you want to, you feel tired, you feel exhausted at that moment, and these hormones are being released, and it can uh, result to so many um, health conditions, such as it can increase your heart rate at that moment, it can um, increase your blood pressure at that moment. That's why it's very essential for, if you are going to do that, you, have, you should have a medical team, with, medical team in place. So it can also increase your blood pressure, it can also increase your blood um, sugar level, which if you have been exposed to a lot of stress at that moment can result to being um, diabetic and whatnot. So um, at that moment also, since you are standing for a very long time, for either person that was standing for a very long time, it can result to um, back pain because you are putting your body at the um, you're standing at a very long period, and so your body is resting at your backbone. 
So it can develop back pain, it can develop shoulder pain at that period of time. Okay, well... And also, just for a long... Okay. Go on, go on, go on, no problem. No problem. All right. So, for long-term causes that in which this um, stress almost can result to, it can result to, um, for a female, it can result to a regular menstrual cycle. Well, a menstrual cycle will be regular at that moment. After it undergoes a lot of stress at that moment. And also for a male, it can reduce your um, sex hormones that they decrease your um, testosterone at that um, period. And also, at uh, that moment, so your immune system so can also be reduced. So you are prone to a lot of infection at that moment. Okay. Uh, you yeah. mentioned something really interesting there for the male, but let's not look at that for okay. now. Right. <laughs> when, when, when you are at it, at the moment that you are at it, if you must do it, are there special things you should pay attention to, like the food you eat and so on? Of course, the food is very essential. That's why like, even before you start um, the work um, record breaking period, you should undergo a lot of, you have to condition your body, you have to condition your body, do some exercise and condition your body because you have, um, Placing yourself mentally, even mentally and physically. So you have to do some exercise before even starting your world record breaking period. So um, that is even very, very essential because you have to condition your body to, to like, prepare your body for that stress you're going to undergo. Okay, but you said for a woman it can disrupt your menstrual cycle, for instance, but if it does disrupt your, mental, um, your menstrual cycle, uh, is it going to harm your your reproductive health? Um, well, if we are not, it will come back to it's still like come back to normal self. It's just for a period of time. Maybe after undergoing that almost stress, it will maybe for like two three months, your menstrual cycle will be regular, but it will definitely come back to normal. And if you're a guy, there's a tendency that once you're fi you finish from, like this guy who is crying, he might just finish 200 hours of crying and his testosterones are so high, he becomes randy. Are we under threat? Do you understand? I don't think his crying is good. Now it depends on, now it depends on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to make. Crying is not good to them, so not like physical strength and physical, oh, oh let me. Like power, anything that you are being, you are not exhausting your body. You are just crying. So you think crying is not exhaustive? I don't think crying is exhaustive. Oh. Like I don't, I don't think. Doctor, you have not cried. <laughs> you have not cried before. Cry. The I, kind I, of I, crying I that he is crying, I, like I a higher cry. Mm. Yes, I think maybe if you've lost somebody, definitely crying is not exhaustive. So I feel it's just a joke. I don't know. Trying to cry for. Well, okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, we talked about food uh, being a very integral part. You discipline your body and all that. But are there particular types of food that, if you need to do this kind of exercise, uh, because it's a mental exercise as well, it's a physical one, it's a mental exercise as well, and all that, are there particular types of food that we should concentrate on more than others? Um, yes, we should concentrate more on because you definitely need glucose, you need um, carbohydrates, so you need um, protein at that time just to help. Like you say, self protein is a building block, so it will help you build up some hormones, some amino acids that you need in your body to help you withstand the stress. So, and the carbohydrates is also important to help you um, give you glucose that you need to undergo that. Okay, now uh, let, let's look at when, after they have finished whatever they're doing, um, I see uh, Hilda Bassi. I don't know beyond what I see on the social media or all that, but what I'm thinking is that after she finished that, she just started basking in the euphoria of having won or broken a world record. Nothing was said about 
therapy or something after that kind of a strenuous exercise. Do you recommend therapy after that uh, exercise or you, you can just start to function and let your body correct itself after a while? Because let's say you're standing for 150 hours or you're doing something else for 200 hours or even the 100 hours that Hilda uh, undertook. Do you recommend therapy or you think the body can correct itself? Well, I recommend therapy. Therapy is very good because you are also undergoing a lot of mental stress during that period. So definitely if you have someone that you can talk to, that you can rely on. And also, um, apart from you have to undergo physical therapy, you have to undergo mental therapy. So it's very important to do that. Okay, well, um, not everybody will enter the Guinness Book of Records, but to live in Lagos and survive, you're already in a book of record that may not be recognized worldwide. Um, we're looking about at, at the kind of breakdown that Lagosians especially might, might go through if they don't do X, Y, Z. So if you see the strenuous life in Lagos, and you're trying to recommend something for the person who stays in Lagos. Maybe you, have, you get home uh, in the night, very late because of the traffic. You get up very early so that you can beat that traffic and get to work every day of your life. And it takes a toll on your body. What do you recommend that uh, Lagosians need to do to stay healthy, even in the face of the kind of adversity that we face in Lagos? Okay, um, it's very important if we always have like a regular medical checkup because that's very important. There are a lot of people that are going about it, very increased blood pressure, hypertension, and they say hypertension is a silent killer. So it's very important if you do a regular checkup. You don't be able to, but like, if you even have a machine that which you can really check your blood pressure at home, checking your sugar level at home is very, very important as individuals, as the question, as you say. So honestly, the regular medical checkup is very important as the question should do that. That will help us. Well. This is our Lagos. We'll have to survive it and all that. So just uh, a general advice for, uh, for people, uh, because we don't like going to hospitals. That is by we, I mean Nigerians generally. When you hear that somebody has gone to hospital and said, oh, okay, this case must have been uh, so much. Maybe it's uh, at a dying point. That's why he had to go to the hospital. Our people don't like going to the hospital and all that. So just a general advice to... Nigerian people as regards their uh, health, health care and all that, before we wrap up. All right. So, um, just to general, even if you don't like going to this, at least you can dedicate a day every day once to go to the hospital just to do a full blood count, like to see what is your body is at that moment. So, um, and like I said earlier, you should also have like a machine where you can use to check your blood pressure, can use to check your sugar level as individuals. That will help a lot so that if there's any um, crisis, you'll be able to report to the hospital and your treatment can become a product. Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Faith uh, Jakai, for uh, coming on. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Okay. We've been talking with uh, Dr. Faith Ajakaye, a medical officer here in Lagos, and she was telling us about the physical toll of breaking a world record on the human body. And when she was talking about that, it was not just any record, breaking of record. Like I told you earlier on, there are so many Nigerians that have broken world record or have set world records as the case may be. I'll reel you some of these uh, uh, people who have broken world records without even making the effort. This is, these are not the people, yeah. these are not the people that we're talking about. So if you just do what you do and you do it well, there's a possibility you could even enter the Guinness World uh, Book of Records. For instance, Bose Omolayo, uh, the heaviest para power lift by a female in the 79 kilogram category is 144 kilograms, achieved by Bose Omolayo 
who is Nigerian, so she has that record. Paul Kainde is the same thing for the male, a power lifting. They have entered the world record. Stephen Keshi, I told you earlier, the youngest person to win the Africa Cup of Nations as a player and a coach. Uh, and then we have that as well. Then the other person that we have, remember that Keshi was a captain of the national team and then became the, the coach. Chinon So Eche, the most football, that is soccer ball headers in a prone position in one minute, is 233 and was achieved by Chinon So Eche, a Nigerian. That was done in Ikorekwene, Nigeria, on the 13th of October 2021, not so far ago. Eche also holds the record for the fastest time to 1,000 football uh, touches while balancing a ball on the head in 7 minutes 46 seconds in Ikorekwene, Nigeria, the same day, 13th of October 2021. He equally earned the record of the most consecutive football, that is soccer touches, in one minute while balancing a football on the head, which is 111 in Wari, Nigeria, on the 14th of November 2019. You see, all these things can be done one day at a time. In one day, he broke two records, uh, Guinness World Records. So it doesn't have to be a 200-hour thing before you get into the world records. Haruna Abdulaziz, the most American football touches with the feet in one minute for a male, is 75 and was achieved by Haruna Abdulaziz, a Nigerian, in Kanu, Nigeria, on the 1st of October, 2020. A lot of us didn't even know that American football was in Nigeria. Peter Aho, Nigeria's Peter Aho took six wickets for five runs in 3.4 overs against Sierra Leone in a match staged at the University of Lagos Cricket Oval in Nigeria on the 24th of October 2021. This included a hat trick with the last ball of the second over the first two balls of the fourth as the visitors subsided uh, to 70 all out, chasing 91 for victory. Bayo Omobo Ryowo. Uh, the largest photo book measures 60.84 uh, meters or square meters and it was achieved by the TJ agency, Bayo Omoboriowo and Federal Republic of Nigeria. That is Nigeria in Abuja, verified on the 30th of September 2021. The book is a recreation of the photo book titled Discover Nigeria. We also have Mfonudo. Uh, who is a Nigerian and scored 23 goals for Enyimba in the Nigerian Premier League in 2013-2014, breaking the previous best of 20 set by Jude Aneke here in Nigeria. So there are so many records that have been broken. Um, Fela and Nikola Kuti has broken a record as well, and we have other names that you might want to find out. So just Google it, and you see 41, at least 41 excluding Hilda Bassi that have broken world records or set world records from here in Nigeria. So if you want to do it, and if you must do it, you could find something really uh, easy for you to do that you can only be the one that has done it best in the entire world. That's how we are going to wrap up today's show. But remember this quote, Ev over every mountain there is a path, although it may not be seen from the valley. That is according to Theodore Rothke. So, have a wonderful day. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji on behalf of the entire team saying thanks for being there.